Prime Minister Modi has indicated that he wants India to be among the leagues of Taiwan, South Korea and the U.S. and Japan to become a strong semiconductor nation within five years. Do you think this goal is realistic? Well, this is very ambitious and this is a good thing for a developing country like India and it will not happen under any other prime minister other than Modi. But um, it, it's very challenging because, um, well, if we go back to the uh, collaborative uh, case between PSMC and Tata, actually they are producing, well, the first stage that the goal is to produce legacy chips. Mm -hmm which is, you know, the mature process, right. like 28 not nanometers. And, uh, well, you, you know, to produce advanced chips requires a lot of tech, tech, uh, technology uh, development and all the supports. So for India to overtake uh, either Taiwan or South Korea, it's never been an easy task. Mm -hmm. So I think there will be a long way to go for Indians. But um, well, nobody knows what will happen in the years to come, maybe uh, with some policies, anything could happen with the support of um, the foreign companies or some big tech firms outside. But still, I think it has a long way to go. Thank you. What's your assessment? I may, yeah, I may <laughs> add a bit to what Roger, uh, Roger has said. I think India is, as I mentioned, it is a beginner in semiconductor uh, industry, different from US, Japan, or Germany, which has already developed that industry, but lost them, lost the market share in the past uh, two decades. So Indian is very eager to develop its own um, um, supply chain. However, Indian is strong in IC design, is strong in uh, talents, and also right now they are bringing new uh, investment in uh, fabrication as well as testing packaging. That is a very important first step. However, following the first step, there are tons of work to be mm -hmm. to be finished. I just happened to interview the Tata company uh, last month, and they are excited, but on the other hand, uh, under great pressure because mm -hmm. um, they will need a lot of experiences sharing from Taiwanese company, including how to design the fab and how to train uh, how to train the engineers, uh, uh, things like this. And as I mentioned, that uh, for PSNC's uh, collaboration model with India, it's um, it's not not a joint venture. It's a kind of a technology a transfer, uh, PSNC assisting India to uh, 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 to build its factory. And therefore, um, which uh, party is going to bring all these uh, key suppliers together mm -hmm. with PSMC? That will mm -hmm. be very, very important because what from our observation of TSMC and mm -hmm. other companies' mm -hmm. experiences in Arizona or in Japan, um, uh, TSNC is able to bring together with the company um, dozens of suppliers to work with them. But right now, uh, PSMC is probably the first one, mm -hmm. and it will have to encourage dozens of um, related suppliers to be there. Otherwise, just one PSMC will never be enough. One will not be enough. It definitely yeah. takes like it takes everybody like a lot of the whole ecosystem, the supply chain, yes. to work together to yes. make that happen. Yes. According to Spherical Insights, the India semiconductor market was valued at $26.3 billion in 2022 and is projected to grow at a CAGR of 25.7% from 2022 to 2032, reaching $271.9 billion by 2032. This tenfold growth presents significant competitive implications on a global stage. So moving on, Professor Liu, could you please analyze how India plans to compete with these major semiconductor manufacturers in the world and how can they achieve this tenfold growth? Well, um, India now has been a growing market, but the problem is that in, if you analyze the structure, the added value uh, rate of the Indian semiconductor um, producing line actually is only 25%. It means that they rely a lot on importing you know, the core elements or the core segments from the outside. So unless India has acquired the capability to manufacture its own chips, it will remain like that. It means that the most most of the uh, the values or the most of the benefit will be going outside of the Indian supply chain. So um, so this is like a dilemma 
in the Indian uh, structure. So I think now the Modi government will be trying very hard to leverage its geopolitical situations. Uh, for example, the coming uh, conflict between China and the United States. And at the same time, they are trying to use the, um, the domestic um, policy tools such as POI production linked initiatives, try to encourage more and more uh, big tech firms from the US, from Europe to set up uh, R&D centers or manufacturing centers inside of India. But like Christy has rightly mentioned, well, whether this will grow to be a comprehensive ecosystem actually depends on a lot of uh, factors which is yet to come.